Starting the timer for an hour. I'm really hoping that the uh, camera doesn't cut out randomly as Canon's sometimes do because I would love to be able to upload this full take unedited. Um, so let's see, I'm opening Ableton, make it full screen. I forget how to do that and I'm wasting precious time. Wait, actually, oh yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, so I'm in Rob's room right now because he wanted to work outside and Joel is in the room that he and I are sharing. Um, so that's, that's where I am. I don't know, I feel like I wanted to share that with you. I'm going to... I have so much stuff everywhere. Okay. My plan is to make a lo-fi hip hop beat because I'm just kind of in that zone right now. I've been making a lot of it, listening to a lot of it, but also I feel like it is a genre that could be easier to produce. Um, and I won't be using uh, real samples. Uh, like I won't be taking anything off vinyl or tape or whatever. I'll just be trying to create something that sounds like that, running it through some filters uh, and hopefully making a listenable beat. So let's go. Maybe I'll show you my screen. this good? Does this show you enough? Let's try it. Okay, um, I already have a drum track loaded up. It's got this uh, dr empty drum rack in it and a FabFilter EQ, which is a, a default that I use, but it just rolls off everything below 22 hertz there um, because you never need that information. Uh, let's see. Do I want to start with drums? I guess so, why not? Oh, I'll make sure I'm muted just so I definitely don't hear anything. And I don't think I know my sample library well enough to to know what samples I'm picking. I, I, I know the general categories, so I'm just gonna pick a, you know what? 22, let's go with 22 all the way here. I've got a bass drum. This is from a hit kit. Hit kit, bass drum, various 022 is the bass drum I'm using. Let's get a hi-hat in there. A closed hi-hat, number 22. And I'm gonna get a couple different claps because I know I usually use more than one clap. So 22 and 23, just keep things simple. Not gonna labor over these choices. So let's look at these. Uh, this kick drum, I can't tell anything really about it. The hat I am going to shorten just to make sure I get a really crisp, small hat. That's what I want um, for this type of music. And then the claps, like there's one that's a little more solid looking and then the second one has two distinct claps in it. So layered, these are probably gonna be a little on the uh, sloppier side rather than like just one clap that goes all the way uh, you know, really cuts through. So um, that's good, actually. That That's kind of what I would want for this. I'm making a MIDI track or a MIDI clip. Uh, I guess I'll tap tempo. Um, so what would be like a lo-fi hip hop type of chill tempo? Like, oh wait, I'm tapping uh, twice as fast as I need to. So like that. 84.55 BPM, let's do it. Um, oh, and I guess, I didn't think of this until now. I'm gonna turn on the metronome and just watch the little dots move. Okay, I'm gonna make this in eighth notes so that they move faster and that's how I will have to do my beat. Or no, you know what, I could just draw the beat. Yeah, I'll draw the beat and introduce, like I'll move some stuff around to make it a little like groovier and more human, but um, yeah, so we'll put the claps on every two and four and kick drums like this and hi-hats. Oh wait, these are the claps. This top layer is the hi-hat. Hi-hats every uh, eighth note and these pickup kicks are gonna be slightly lower in volume. I'm going to make one of the claps, which is the one that's more, 23 is the one with two different 
things to it. I'm gonna make that hit slightly earlier. And um, yeah, hopefully we get like a sort of sloppier clap sound, something with a, that sounds a bit more live and uh, like it's a few people clapping. The hi-hat, um, I'm gonna shift everything over the tiniest bit and then every middle one even further, or every middle one, every other one, even further over just to give it a bit of a swing. This is something that I feel like I notice happens in a lot of beats is the hi-hats will be slightly later than the kicks and snares and the um, the, the offbeat hi-hats are even later for, uh, for a good groove. Um, what else? I'll put, I guess, my normal effects on this drum kit, uh, which is just like, some compression, uh, I don't know, maybe like 15 milliseconds of attack, 35 of release. I use a ratio of 4.44 to one by default. I like these uh, numbers that are a lot of the same number, if you can't tell. And then I guess it's just visually, I'll have to tell how much I need to compress this by. Like, that's really hard to tell. I don't know. I mean, that seems extreme. I feel like I'm usually between negative 15 and negative 30 dB, so... Sure, this looks okay. Negative 23.2. Let's just make it negative 22.2 to keep on theme. Um, so yeah, we've got our, our drums done for now. Let's uh, add a piano. So I'm using contact, we're going to uh, let's just use an upright piano. Won't tweak that sound at all. Now I can, you can see there, it's making sound when I play notes on the keyboard. I have, hmm. I knew I wanted to use a piano because it would be something where, you know, it's a very basic sound. We all know what it sounds like and I, I know different ways to play it that are good. But now I'm realizing like, I'm not gonna be entirely sure which register sounds right. Uh, I think I can, I know what these, what notes these keys represent. So I could, I can be pretty sure about a chord progression, but I'm gonna keep it simple anyway, just in case. I'm gonna go uh, E minor to B major. Yeah, that could be cool. Um, Let's try it. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna have to play it with the drum beat and just use this tiny metronome or maybe maybe looking at which drums are are going by as my cue. Let's get some more visual feedback here since we don't have any audio. And uh, arming the recording. Oh, I don't have a count in from the metro. Okay, we're, we're just gonna try this. And I guess I can visually try and line stuff up later, but I think this is E minor and this will be um wait Duh. oh wait this is f sharp yes okay i think this is d sharp f sharp b this is e g b so those are my two chords let's record this uh i was already late okay record again Two, three, four. Uh, I didn't hit the right notes anyway. Timing wise, I don't know if this is latency or me. Uh, let's just use what we've got. I'll go in there and line it up, sort of. Still keep some of that human feel, but it looks like I'm pretty on beat for most of these. This is where I hit the wrong notes, so I'll copy and paste them from the next one. And okay, so I want I want them to be pretty close to on beat, but not exactly on beat, so that it it has some groove to it, has some humanness to it. I also know I like a little bit of I don't even know what the musical term is, but when you have like when you play a piano chord and you kind of your fingers hit at different times and it usually goes low to high and it's like da da da, um, just like a slight bit 
of difference between when each note hits I find is really nice instead of being really robotically uh, all coming down at the same time. So I'm going to make that edit right now um, where generally the notes are hitting at slightly different times and usually the lower ones would hit earlier than the later ones. Uh, and now I'll go through each one and just kind of get them into uh, more more close to the beats that they should be on. That looks pretty good. This one's early. Most of them have been late so far. Oh, and then there are a bunch of early ones in a row. Actually, yeah, all the rest of them. So I definitely sped up as I played, which is uh, definitely a common thing that I do. It's my probably the area of musicianship where I am the most lacking is like keeping really solid time. Um, you know, whenever music gets excited, exciting for me, I just speed up. Uh, let's see. That's good. These last notes are a little longer. I'm going to shorten them, keep everything a little more consistent. Actually, all these second bar are slightly longer than the first bar. So I think we're getting these to match enough. Okay, so got our piano loop. I'm going to make that a perfect one bar loop. Um, now let's add a bass line. Use contact again. Get a nice, uh, oops. Get a nice uh, upright bass. Ooh, jazz upright. Sure, let's use that. Because usually in uh, a lot of lo-fi hip hop they sample jazz. Let's label our tracks, sure. I don't see myself using a ton more, but uh, it's good to keep organized. So, should be able to play the bass now. Oh yeah, wait, let me check what octave that piano was in. We're looking at C3. Ah, oh, see, I'm not sure. I don't know if, if C3 or C4 would be the octave I want. Um, I'm just gonna stay where it is. And for the bass, oh, here's what I know I could do. I know I want like really low bass notes. I'm gonna make this a twice as long as the piano loop. Um, so I can see what the lowest note that makes a sound is. There we go. That's the lowest one sounding. So I know that's the low E on the bass. Okay. Uh, what kind of a line will we do? So I'm, I've got to picture this chord progression again. It's going to be like, dun, 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 Oh, wait, which is the right note? This is F sharp, right? No? E, F, F sharp. What? How is this note not sounding? I'm pretty sure. This has got to be a note. What's going on? Whoa. Okay, there's something I'm not understanding here because I'm so certain if this this I know is an E, this is an F, that has to be an F sharp, but it's not sounding. And the G sharp's not sounding. What is that? Should I go up an octave? Yeah, they have them there. So me, what am I triggering down at the lowest note that doesn't have? Hmm, okay. I might have a bass line that's an octave higher than I want it, but it's weirding me out that the low octave doesn't have certain notes. Okay, I'm gonna do it like this. I guess I can still get to that B. Let's just, let's just try it. Do, 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 do. I don't know why, I just by habit I hit play, but I have nothing to play along to right now as I'm practicing, so I'm just gonna be playing it in my head. Yeah, I'll do that. 
ba 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 Okay, I think I sped up again. It's so hard to play and just get your time from watching these metronome indicators. Um, and I definitely know I hit a, a C when I wanted to hit a B. I think that's that note, so. Yeah, this is where I sped up. These should all be over here. These are pretty on beats. Move them slightly over. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna do my best to get these to like closer to on beat, but not perfectly on beat because we want that human feel. Um, this looks all right. Maybe this one's too light. It's so hard to tell when you're. Um, wanting to swing things or make them human. You know, if I, I guess if I picked a genre where everything was like really quantized, then I could at least know for timing that I was dead on. But here I'm like, I'm, I'm making my best guesses as to what is going to feel natural, not robotic, played by a human, uh, but also played by a human who could hear what he was doing. <laughs> um, so I guess, yeah, that's our loop. I think, oh wait, no, I didn't get through all the timing stuff. This, I want it to be more, uh, more uh, accurate. But yeah, I guess this is probably the best I can do right here. So um, yeah, now uh, let's see, I guess putting some effects on the bass, I usually would lightly compress it uh, maybe even saturate it a bit before compressing. How much though? Like, it's so hard to tell with it. Hearing it, this is something you really want to dial into taste. So I'm going to err on the safe side and not go as extreme as I sometimes might. Uh, we'll put the ratio down a bit. We'll, uh, attack time. I'm not sure. I think, I think we could go with a, a longish release and like a really quick attack to just squash everything down. That would maybe sound good. Ah, oh, so hard to tell. I mean, in a genre like this, I would rather over compress than under. So let's roll with that. Make that loop for a while. Um, how long is this? Two minutes and a half. Yeah, I think we're just gonna come back and like show off our like 15 or 30 seconds cool little loops. I don't, I don't think anyone's making a full track, so I'm gonna shave that down. Um, what are we working with here? Oh, mixing is gonna be ridiculous, but I kinda, I wanna challenge myself to add more layers. Maybe I'll do like a lead line. Oh, this is tough. Maybe I'll, I'll try and mix what I've got. Or here, here one, here's one thing I can be confident about, the master. So, uh, oh, these are defaults that I have. I'll clear those away. Um, I know that I want to put the Universal Audio Ampex Tape plugin on here. Um, tweak these a bit. Oh, wait. Am I allowed to use presets? Let's use the Sunbaked cassette preset, but let's tweak that a bit. I know that this is the one one that I really like on the Ampex in terms of making stuff really sound old and, you know, like it's from tape and a little wobbly and, uh, you know, nostalgic. So adjust some of these settings to be less extreme. Um, yeah, I think that's generally the kind of thing I would do. And this is a tough thing, like it shows that it's clipping a lot, but sometimes I do use it to that degree. I'm just not sure how much it should be clipping. Like I could end up with a really distorted mix. So again, I might err on the safe side here. I don't know. 
just get it like lightly going. But these settings look a little lower than what I normally use, so that's a tough call. And I, I'm not really sure, I don't remember how these meters react and, and you know, if I could glean anything from that. Um, so let's leave that where it is. I'm gonna throw a spectrum analyzer on here. You can see there's like a good amount of that bass coming through. It's hard to tell if it's gonna be too much, but it is stronger than a lot of the other frequencies there. So I'm gonna bring this down a touch. Ooh, and the drums. I'm gonna bring the hi-hats down because I know I usually do that. I, I, I prefer my um, my drum kits to uh, for, the, for the kicks and snares to hit a lot harder than the hi-hats. And I, I guess the kicks and snares or the, the kicks and claps, I try to get at the same level usually. But when you're dealing with two claps versus one kick sample, it's hard to know. I guess I can look at the master and see how that's hitting. Uh, from what I can tell, they're very similar. Cool, let's do that. Oh, by the way, these are some default sends that I have on here. I'll just delete those so that, uh, you know, I'm not using anything pre-planned here. Uh, because I do have a default Ableton set, um, with a few plugins on there. But, yeah, I guess, like, these are, are VST instruments. I, I probably don't need to EQ them. Let's add one more layer. Uh, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I just need a moment to think right now. Um, this is a really, really interesting process. Like I, I usually like listening to my music while I'm producing. And now I'm, you know, while I'm doing this deaf music challenge, it's kind of comforting to just like see the timeline playing and the, the tracks, you know, lighting up and it's just such a part of the process to kind of like do some work and then vibe to it a bit, hear what you could add or improve. Uh, and now I'm like, I, I feel like cut off, I guess. It's, it's really strange. So without hearing what I have so far, it's hard to know what I could add, what I should add, or if, you know, whatever I do add is going to work. Because what I, I'm pretty confident that what I have now should work together. It might be badly mixed, but oh, oh, I'm gonna side chain stuff. That's what I, what it needs. We do know that um, this genre uses some heavy side chaining. Let's group the piano and bass together and add a compressor. We will side chain it too the drums, but just the low frequencies from that track. Maybe get it ducking on the snares a bit too. And I don't know how much. Like, so this is one of those things too that you have to really dial into taste is like some people like a really pumping mix, some don't, but the ducking is still good to get the drums to come through nicely. But, um, it's really like down to each track how much you want it. So yeah, I don't know, I'm gonna leave it there. It feels like it's not too crazy, but it's not too little. Uh, so that's one one thing I can do that I know I it probably was an improvement to do that versus not doing it. What else can I look at? Like the spectrum analyzer's not giving me too much. I could look at the drums, see if I mean, that looks normal-ish to me. Maybe the kicks are a little high, like that bass is high, but it's also hip hop. So you want them to knock. I don't, hmm. Okay, wait, let's complete the mastering chain. I also would like to put a, maybe a light bit of, uh... oh, actually, well, you, you're always gonna put a limiter on. So precision, limiter, I think 2 dB is pretty healthy. We're gonna put the output at minus 0 0.1 decibels. And then uh, usually pretty fail proof is a light bit of L1 ultra maximizer. Let's bring this down to like, I don't know, one and a half-ish, slightly more, 1.7. Um, and I, 
I never pay attention to these meters. I literally only use this one dial in this plug-in uh, to get things sounding more punchy and loud. So we've got, got all that going. I'm still, you know, I'm really procrastinating about adding this lead line because I think it's the one place where it's, it's gonna be the most easy for me to make a mistake, but let's go for it. Um, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use Monarch. It's a, uh, I think I got a Monarch, wait, is it Reactor 6? Yeah. Um, Monarch plugin, it's like a, I don't remember if it's emulating a specific piece of hardware, but it's a great sort of like monophonic analog synth type of thing. I wonder, maybe I should just start with a, a preset. Start with a lead, wait, classic? Oh, these names don't help me. Lead, neon lead, maybe that's the one I want. Let's, let's just pick this by coolest name. I know I want a lead, so let's look in the lead section as well. Mole attack, slime life too. Great name, but it sounds like it's not what I want. I'm gonna I'm gonna play it safe again and go in the classic section with something that has lead in the title. So I know it's not gonna be a crazy far out sound, um, but it will be a lead. Uh, and I'm gonna be able to play it from here. I wanna be, I'll adjust the octave later. I'll probably wanna be higher than where I was with the piano. Uh, I'm gonna check on the time. Oh, okay, we're at 33 minutes and a half left. Cool, 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 cool. I think this is the last thing we're gonna add. I think I'm gonna finish early because I, I don't know what more this really needs. I, I definitely, you know, in picking this genre, uh, I can get away with, with doing things a little simpler, like a, four tracks in total. Um, yeah, it's, it's not like... Uh, I, I think there's a higher height to fall from if you do a bad like job with EDM or indie rock or something like that. Uh, but I don't know, that maybe that's just my bias. Anyway, let's look at this lead. Okay, wait, wait, I can spectrum analyze. Let's see if this is like something that goes pretty high um, and stays pretty high. Like I don't, I don't want it to cut off too much. I think I'm gonna have the sustain for the filter pretty high have the filter frequency pretty high, only a tiny bit of resonance. Uh, the sustain for the uh, volume pretty high. Attack, like a little bit of attack might be fun on the filter, so it's not just like a an instant sound, but a little, a little whap. Uh, let's see, they've got a saw, or is that a triangle? I don't know how to read this. Uh, and the third oscillator is not active. Okay, I, you know, there's nothing else I'm gonna change about this preset. I'm just gonna think about what line I could use. So I got my chord progression that's like minor one to dominant and um, do, da, do. <laughs> um what if I full on just tried to play a solo? Would that be, would that be crazy and hilarious? Here, I'll angle down to uh, to the keys. Maybe zoom in a touch. And is that the gr greatest angle? I've got so much time now for this last part that I know is the last thing I'm gonna add that I can like get fancier with my cinematography. Um. I feel like my hands were blocking the keys before, so I don't know. Maybe there's no way around that unless I can manage a top down, which I do not have the tripod for, so. Um Yeah, I'm doing this guys. I'm getting the I'm getting the new angle. Going like this. Going like this. Oh, that's Kind of cool there. Wait, oh, oh, I'm balancing on something weird. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, I straight up almost lost my camera off the edge of this table. That's what was happening. Uh, sure. How's that? Kind of. I don't... All right, dudes, movie recording stopped automatically. That sucks. Oh, I wonder if my card's full. Well, anyway, I promise I did not listen to anything in that break. Uh, no more f fidgeting around with this uh, angle. Let's just record a, a lead synth line. I'm gonna try and just like sing this. Oh, but I need to, uh, I need to like look at my fingers to see what I'm playing, but I need to look at the screen to get the metronome. So I guess I'm not looking at my fingers. I'm just gonna map out what I, what I think I know I'm gonna use. Okay, let's record. Uh, sure. How about, yeah, we'll, we'll use that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it in after a couple of the loops. So, um, yeah, this is what I, what I just put down and, um, yeah, we'll have a little bit of a beat and then this random synth solo will come in that may or may not be anything worth listening to. Yeah. Uh, what else do I want to do? Oh, I mean, you know, I'll put that in the sidechain group too, so it ducks. What octave was I in? C4? Yeah. Yeah, that should be okay. And then, mix-wise, like, where does that go? Um, ooh, you know what? Probably needs reverb. I haven't thought about space at all. You know what? I'll put a reverb on one of the claps, and I'll put a delay on the lead synth. Which delay? Um, here, I'll show you my screen again. Okay, good. My card seems to still be going strong. That is very nice. Um, right, I'm using a delay on this lead synth. I'm using Ableton filter delay because it's one of the ones I know best. Let's put 3 sixteenths. We'll turn it low in the mix because I'm playing it safe. And um, yeah, these look like these look like decent settings. Um, and then I, I wanted a bit of reverb on the clap, so let's choose. Clap 22 and put Fab, actually, hmm, I know, probably know the Ableton reverb the best. So let's do that. It's gonna be like 14% wet, high quality. So we'll, won't do too much high cut. Spin in the lower left region. Pre-delay, leave it there. Stereo, leave it there. Decay time, leave it there. Chorus, leave it, yeah, leave it at that. It's like a pretty low amount in there. I think I'm gonna call this done, guys. Oh, actually, the master's not hitting hitting that hard. It's like a, is everything too low? What's going on? Well, that's kind of the least important part right now. Oh, wait. When the lead synth came on, this jumped up. That makes me think the lead synth is too loud. I'm gonna, I'm gonna duck that down. And actually looking at it, it seems like it was higher than a lot of other stuff. Let's make it match the piano-ish. How about that? And then, I guess the drums could come up. Mixing deaf is crazy. Um, I have no idea, but I mean, as much as I pay attention to these visual cues when I'm mixing for real, you you use your ears more, like it's, it's music. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna call it done. I have finished with, where is the, 25 and a half minutes to spare. Um, I do feel like I picked an easier genre than maybe some others would have been, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see how they do in a bit.